Bullying claims have been haunting Meghan Markle for some time now. She was able to brush them off in 2021, saying that the royal family and the British press were out to destroy her. This worked to stop at least some of the damage to her reputation, but the most recent Hollywood Reporter article has destroyed all chances for Meghan Markle to hide the truth, that she, in fact, is a bully. The article titled Why Hollywood Keeps Quitting on Harry and Meghan details the various instances of bullying from the time that the couple were senior working royal members. But The Hollywood Reporter took it a step further and interviewed a source close to the couple who said, quote, everyone's terrified of Meghan. She belittles people. She doesn't take advice. They're both poor decision makers. They change their minds frequently. Harry is a very, very charming person, no airs at all, but he's very much an enabler and she's just terrible. A source also says, she's absolutely relentless. She marches around like a dictator in heels, fuming and barking orders. I've watched her reduce grown men to tears. This was a big hit for Meghan since The Hollywood Reporter is a reputable publication and with no connections or loyalties to the British royal family, making this article much harder to refute. But she tried to anyway. US Weekly quickly published an exclusive titled, What It's Really Like to Work for Meghan Markle. The seven current and former staff members describe a supportive and fun workplace that involves care packages, happy hours, karaoke nights, credit being given for great ideas and everyday kindness. One staffer told us that their colleagues have been dumbfounded by these claims, saying the stories are likely made up by someone who's disgruntled. The story goes on to say that the office culture is positive. This is the first company I've worked where I liked every person, says the source. Harry and Meghan picked the best of the best from every field and watered the seeds for them to flourish. That last line sounds suspiciously like it was from the desk of Meghan Markle, doesn't it? Unfortunately for Meghan Markle, the story doesn't end there since soon after a source told the Daily Beast that Meghan Markle was a demon who had psycho moments as a boss. Wow, it seems that just in a few days Meghan has taken quite the fall with her high aspirations of making it in Hollywood fast evaporating. Yet again, she's relying on the old strategy of denying the accusations and claiming to be the victim of liars. This was a strategy that Amber Heard had used during her trial against Johnny Depp, where her rebuttal to most accusations of bad behavior was to say that people were lying to curry favor with a powerful man. And and we all know how that went for Amber Heard. Meghan is cut from a similar cloth and struggles with taking accountability for any of her actions. One would have thought that Meghan would have reconsidered her bad behavior when initial bullying allegations had come up in 2021. At that time, Buckingham Palace even initiated an investigation. And you know what they did? They did Meghan a favor and refused to release the results. If the findings had been in favor of Meghan Markle and supported her claim that she has been nothing but nice to her staff, Meghan would have been the first to call for a release, but instead she was more than happy to accept that it was kept hidden. She and Harry have endlessly claimed that the palace have never protected them, and yet there are so many instances of them doing just that. So why doesn't Meghan tread more carefully, knowing full well that the family is sitting on plenty of proof that could take down her image that she's been working so hard to prop up? But in that same line of thinking, why doesn't Meghan tread carefully with employees since the bullying claims keep getting louder and louder? Well, it's because Meghan doesn't think Think what she's doing counts as bullying. As she has said in one of her episodes on Archetypes, I find myself cowering and tiptoeing into a room. Just say what it is that you need. You're allowed to set boundaries. You're allowed to be clear. It doesn't make you demanding. It doesn't make you difficult. It makes you clear. This is very consistent with narcissists who find a way to justify their behaviors no matter how the other person feels. As a source told the Daily Beast, she is lovely when it's all going her way, but a demon when the worm turns. To Megan's ears, that doesn't sound unreasonable at all. As long as you do her bidding as she sees fit, she's happy and sweet. But the second you jeopardize her vision, her desire, or her day, she can throw a demonic level fit if she wants. She is, after all, a woman who knows how to use her voice and project her power. In my experience with narcissists, they will mistreat you and when you remind them that they treated you poorly, they'll seemingly have no memory of it and categorically deny it. Gaslighting, as we all commonly know that to be. According to Meghan Markle, she is perfect and anything to the contrary is a dirty, filthy lie told by jealous people. Unfortunately for Meghan, the internet never forgets. We've seen countless instances of mass slips, like this one when an interviewer was asking an innocuous question. Do you know how to pour the perfect pint of Guinness? I do not, but I hear that this is the man to be taught from, so I'm excited. I think I think we can do this. Now I am going to challenge you to... Or this rough rejection of help when an old man was offering her a hand while getting out of the car or the flash of anger when her mother started speaking. 
or the multiple instances of her anger at Prince Harry when he's speaking. Uh, you know, if, if you not know, to... If you know how to help. If, mm. well, thank you. At, th at this point, we've got to the stage where almost every parent needs to be a first responder. Or her burning desire to have all the attention, which she gets by cutting Harry off. We've all seen these instances for ourselves. Seen her anger when Prince Harry said she would be another member of the team. I think it's, um, you know, it's a... For me, it's a, an added member of the family. It's, a, it's, a, it's another, another team player as part of the, the bigger team. And you know, for all of us, all we want to do is be able to... Pull Harry back or nudge him out of the way so she can be the first to speak to someone. Seeing her flash her belly countless times to get attention. And if this is how she behaved, knowing full well that the cameras are on, how does she behave when they're not? For God's sakes, even Prince Harry in his book Spare said that more than once, a staff member slumped across their desk and wept. I guess Meghan forgot to water her little staff seedlings on those days. We've seen Meghan shed tears, claiming that at the end of the day, she is just the victim of a racist family, hateful press, jealous people, and disgruntled employees. Did you make Kate cry? No. So where did that come from? Was there a situation where she might have cried or she could have no, cried? No, the no. reverse happened. Were you silent or were you silenced? The latter. I was woken up in the middle of the night to her crying in her pillow because she doesn't want to wake me up because I'm already carrying too much. That's heartbreaking. I would never want someone else to feel that way. And I would never want someone else to be making those sort of plans. And I would never want someone else to not be believed. The bulk of the bullying and abuse that I was experiencing in social media and online was when I was pregnant with Archie and with Lily and with a newborn with each of them. Um, and you just think about that and you like, to really wrap your head around why people would be so hateful. Every single day I was coming back from work from London, I was coming back to my wife crying while breastfeeding Archie. Mm. That's coming from someone who wasn't reading anything. And as she touched on earlier, if she had read anything, she wouldn't be here now. And also thank you for asking, because not many people have asked if I'm okay. But it's, uh, it's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. It's not going to be given a title. And also, concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. Are we safe? Are the doors locked? Is security on? Is everything? That's real. Are my babies safe? And that I wasn't just being thrown to the wolves, I was being fed to the wolves. Megan decided to share with me the suicidal thoughts and the, and the practicalities of how she was going to end her life. And I, I just didn't I just didn't want to be alive anymore. And that was a very clear and real and frightening, constant thought. I thought it would have solved everything for everyone, right? So were you thinking of harming yourself? Were you having suicidal thoughts? Yes, this was very, very clear. So if, if me voicing what I have um, overcome, will save someone or asks or encourage someone in their life to really genuinely check in on them and not assume that the appearance is good so everything's okay, then that's worth it. I'll, I'll take a hit for that. And you know what? People are no longer buying the victim game. She can use it to whitewash over the accusations all she wants. She can use tears and false claims of racism to distract from the truth. But the people aren't buying it. First, she lost the British, but she barely cared because she had her eyes set on California and Hollywood. And now, as the Hollywood Reporter confirmed, the entertainment industry is not interested either. This is the best lesson on why victim narratives and constantly playing the race card will only take you so far. It might get you temporary protection, but as time goes on, the truth will out. You can try to stop it with NDAs and threats, but the truth will out. And that's exactly what's happening here. Megan's behavior behind closed doors is being exposed, and it's about time that she reaps what she has sown.